you're watching Nevada Business Chronicles. Take a journey with us to see the innovative businesses that put Nevada on the business map. Connecting you with the businesses, events, and organizations that bring innovation and prosperity to the Nevada area, please welcome your host, Mitch Burney. I have the greatest job. I get to take you places, and today we're at one where you get to paint, whether you know how to or not, drink, and have fun here with Roger and Nikki Wise at Pino's Palette. Thanks so much for having us here today. Thank you so much for coming. You have some great things planned for us. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, well, tonight we are doing something fun. It's our Project Pet, where people come and paint pictures of their pets. Our artists will get up on stage and lead them step by step to finish their portrait. Uh, but to begin with, they send us a picture of their animal. We screen print it onto the canvas. And when they get here, it looks somewhat like any one of these pictures that you can see in the background. And our artist leads them to a finished, beautiful product. You have a few different events that we're going to get to join in on. Absolutely. Today we're going to show you a team building opportunity uh, for corporate events, as well as a themed Harry Potter uh, painting event that we're doing as well. Welcome to Pino's Palette. Um, my name is Ashley. I'm going to be your instructor this evening. I'm also an instructor at the Nevada Museum of Art, and I'm also a public art conservator for the city of Reno. Joining me tonight are my awesome assistants, Edward and Darby, and Dominique. They are also artists here at Pino's Palette. Um, there's about 180 locations across the U.S., um, and that's growing pretty rapidly. We are the third largest in the country, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we're also the largest studio in Reno, and we're also the best, so you can tell all your friends that. Um, and I know we have some familiar faces in here tonight. How many people is this their first time either doing something like this or doing this painting? Ooh, we got some newbies. I like it. I like you guys are ambitious. I love it. Don't worry, we've got you guys. I promise you're in safe hands tonight. That was fantastic. Tell me about this event that we're setting up for now. This is exciting. Uh, we have a lot of Harry Potter fans in the community, so we've created a painting called The Painting That Shall Not Be Named, and it kind of commemorates the Harry Potter theme. So, packed house today. We're super excited to offer specialty paintings at other events besides just regular paintings. So, looking forward to a fantastic afternoon. What makes this so interesting is in this event, they're going to see that they don't have to be an artist to come here and learn how to paint. Definitely not. Our process is so unique that anyone without art experience can leave here with a painting and a smile. That's fantastic. Well, let's take a look.
I'm painting. What am I painting? You're painting a collaborative painting that we do for uh, corporate events. It's called a jigsaw puzzle. What happens there is you take your group and each person takes a different piece of the canvas and they paint it separately and then it comes together to make one giant painting. So these are uh, corporate events, uh, team building exercises in some form. Yes, what this is meant to do is facilitate team building in a new way. Uh, you know, just get people out socializing together and show that they are, truly are a team and when they do something together, it all comes together and it forms a team effort. One that they can display in their office or uh, any facility that they work at. In this case, we're doing a team building event with your team. That's correct. I get to be a part of that. Thank you for including me. This is the awesome Pinot's palette team that you're working with today. So this is just one of your team building exercises. Tell me about some of the others. Oh, we have some really cool stuff that we can offer. One of the, another one that's really fun is called mystery painting. It's where everybody comes in and they're stepped through a painting and through a series of spins and twists and turns, our artist <laughs> navigates the customer to the end game and only right a few minutes before the painting is complete, do they actually know what they painted? And then when they see it, they're completely amazed. Uh, we also do what's called a uh, musical chairs painting. So this is one that's really good for teams that need to work on people that have uh, issues letting go, OCD <laughs> kind of things. Where that, everybody, that probably happens just in about every it office. It does, and it happens in every class too. But what happens is everybody will sit down and they'll start painting the same painting. And then at the artist uh, instruction, you'll get up and move to your right and sit down at your neighbor's canvas and continue working where, where they left off. Well, you can imagine some issues that might arise within the team world with that. So it was an exercise in learning how to let go. And ultimately, you sit back down at your canvas at the end and complete it where you started. This is the perfect time of year to start thinking about booking your holiday office party or team building party. As you can see, we're working here in our Starry Night Beach Room, which can hold up to 32 people. And it's a great venue for a typical office group or dentist office or doctor office or th those sort of parties. And they're a lot of fun. The most common thing that we've we've heard from customers who leave, they come up, they'll come up to our artists or our assistants or even us behind the bar and just say thank you. And like, thank you for what? And they're like, thank you for unlocking something inside me that I didn't know existed. And to be honest with you, that's one of the main reasons we opened Pinot's Palette because we just love to see smiles on people's faces. We're a great business. You have a lot of fun doing it too, I'm sure. It's a lot of fun and we have an amazing staff who's very talented and without them, honestly, we wouldn't have a business. Thank you so much for allowing us to come in and capture this wonderful place, Pino's Palette. There's a variety of different types of events that people can have here. I want to make sure they know what they can do here. Absolutely. Like we're just completing our project pet, but that's just one of many things that you can do here. You can hold a corporate event here, have your group come in during the daytime and have a lot of fun off site. You could book a bachelorette party or a birthday party or a special anniversary party for your loved ones here in our Starry Night Beach Room. Uh, there's just a plethora of opportunities available for you here. I'm sure there are people right now that want to know how they can get registered to come in and paint or have a party here. Absolutely. You can go to our website at www.pinospalette.com forward slash Reno West. We also have an iPhone app, which is super easy to browse through our extensive library of over 1,400 paintings. That's Roger and Nikki Weiss with Pinos Palette. Thanks again so much for having us. Whether you're an up-and-coming artist or an amateur or novice, you're going to paint, drink, and have fun at Pinos Palette. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. Now more from Nevada Business Chronicles. Quite possibly one of the most important conversations we'll ever have on this show is with our next guest, Pamela Zimmer, author, speaker, and mentor. Thank you so much for being on our show. Thank you for coming. Your story is really responsible for what brought you into the industry that you're now serving our community in. So let's start with, if you don't mind, a little bit about Pamela Zimmer. 
I am a mom. I have two little boys, Zach and Brayden. I have an amazing husband, Will, and I used to be an architect. Uh, I had my own firm for almost seven years, 13 years total in architecture before I made that transition and quit my career for motherhood because I always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. And what I thought I was getting into, what I thought was going to be happy and everything I wanted, being home with the boys and my husband now off to work, turned into one of the darkest times of my life with postpartum depression. And the biggest lesson that I learned out of that, out of those years of struggling, was about self-care. And that's what I'm passionate about today, and that's why I do what I do, and that is what has spawned my whole business and um, the moms that I help today. The beautiful part about what we're going to share today is this is more than just about postpartum depression. Everybody that's watching either can benefit from this conversation or know somebody that needs to have this conversation. So I can't wait to get started and delve in a little bit deeper. To establish what caused you to get where you are today, which is going to benefit so many people, let's take a step back, if you would, and, and tell me how that all happened in your life. So ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to have a career like my dad and be a stay-at-home mom like my mom. And when I got out of school, I got my bachelor's in architecture and immediately went into career because I was still single. So I figured that's the path I'm going to go down. A um, couple years later, when I started my own firm, met my husband, we wanted to start a family. Um, it was right around the recession and he was out of a job and I still had my name on the door. So when our first son, Zachary, was born, I went back to work because that's what pretty much any other family would do. That's the decision they would make. And I hated it. I was miserable. And I thought that it was because I had to go back to work. But fast forward a couple years later, when we had our second son, Brayden, and by this time, my husband did have a job again. So I was able to create my exit strategy to get out of my firm. I had a business partner, so I gave the company over to him. Everything seemed like it was going to work out fine. And then four months after Braden was born, I was diagnosed with postpartum depression. And I remember, I remember the sort of my rock bottom. Um, I call it my 3 a.m. story because that's what it was. It was 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was nursing Braden in my room in the dark with just a tiny little light on the nightstand there. And I had chest pains and I I gasped and stopped and it startled him um, and he got right back to nursing and feeding but I couldn't get that out of my head and I thought I honestly thought I was having a heart attack and I was petrified and terrified didn't say a word finished nursing him put him back to sleep next morning still didn't say a word but I went to Google Dr. Google, right? <laughs> um, and I looked up uh, heart attack symptoms in women because I knew I had read about or saw an interview on TV or something that symptoms in women were different than those in men. And so I wanted to make sure I wasn't having a heart attack. And then logic kicked in and I realized if I was having a heart attack, I probably would have been in the hospital and I probably wouldn't be sitting here on my computer right now. So. I typed in some terrifying words for me and that was postpartum depression because I had kind of heard about this thing called postpartum depression but I didn't really know what it was. And what I read was shocking. I read and I learned that depression can cause physical symptoms such as chest pains and anxiety and back pain and headaches and body aches on top of all of the other feelings that I was feeling. So. I held on to that even more for another three days, if you can believe that, um, and just sort of went through my day like a zombie, um, doing what I had to do to care for Brayden, not really telling my husband Will, until finally my doula, who's like a, bir a birthing coach, um, I ended up at her house because she was concerned about me, and that's, that's who diagnosed me, that's where that happened, and she said, you need to 
call your doctor and you need to tell him that you have postpartum depression, not that you think you have it, but that you have it and that you need help. And so I did that. I went home and it was probably the hardest phone call I've ever had to make, but it's probably the phone call that saved my life. First of all, thank you for being willing to be so vulnerable and to share that experience because right now just being able to share that is helping others have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think this is going to surprise a lot of people that this is more common than people want to know or talk about. Yes, um, absolutely. It's actually the number one complication with pregnancy and childbirth. And something shocking that maybe you don't even know, Mitch, is that it's more common than breast cancer. More common than breast cancer, yet far less talked about. The first thing I had to do was acknowledge what was happening, that this was something. It wasn't just me being crazy, unhappy wife. And looking back, I realized that I had been going through postpartum depression for almost three years and that it actually started with Zach almost three years prior. And I was going through all of those years not even knowing what was happening to me. Well, here's the good news. You got help, yes. you got through that. and have experience now worthy of sharing with others and it's far more comprehensive than just postpartum depression. What you do is for everybody and everybody watching as I mentioned earlier. So let's talk about what you do and how you mentor and help work with other people. So I mentioned earlier the biggest lesson that I learned out of my almost six years of postpartum depression was about self-care. And so what I do today is I help moms incorporate that. Um, I work with the overwhelmed moms, the moms wearing all the hats, which is pretty much all of us, right? Um, I work with those who are ready to put themselves first without feeling guilty so they can be the best version of themselves for their kids, their husbands, their family, their work for the world. Um, and it's all coming from a place of this core of self-care, that you have to take care of yourself first or you can't possibly take care of anyone else. And that is a lesson that nobody is exempt from. I wanna take a look at the program that you've created to help work with others to have a life worth living. Mm -hmm. And not just moms. So I work with moms, but this is really about self-care and who doesn't need self-care, right? So. The main message of my program, it just starts with permission. And that's permission to know what you want and permission to do something for yourself. It's permission for self-care. And I work with people and we go through four different areas of their life. We talk about home, we talk about work, we talk about social, and most importantly, we talk about self, which is themselves and getting them to see why it's so important that they incorporate a regular practice of self-care and self-care not being just going to the spa and getting pedicures and massages and you know spending eight hundred dollars at a retreat which is fantastic and I would love to do that but it's also sitting outside and enjoying nature and having a quiet moment it's going up to the lake, sitting by the water, it's taking a walk by the river, it's sitting outside with a journal, it's laying in bed for two minutes to visualize your day, all of those things. Um, I like to tell people that you don't have to spend money for self-care to be worthwhile, but you do have to spend time. And that's the big piece of sort of the first part of my program is the permission and for them to understand we go through a process of assessment because you can't change unless you first know where you're starting from. We go through a process of planning because we're all busy, moms, non-moms, everyone is busy. So how do I fit that into the reality of I only have 24 hours in a day? So I help people figure out what is a priority for them. What do they let go of? What do they say no to? Which again goes back to that permission because when you say no to something or someone else, you're actually saying yes to yourself. Um, and then we talk about alignment, getting your, your body and mind in alignment because that's an important piece too. You have to be healthy physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. It, it's all part of this big picture. And then the last piece of the program is commitment. You have to commit to you. You have to commit to putting yourself first. You mentioned taking the time in today's hustle bustle world. That can be one of the biggest obstacles. What I really love about your program is 
that you break it down. And this is may sound really simple in a nutshell, but this really takes coaching and work and commitment, like you mentioned. So let's take a look at that average day in your life. My day starts like most other Americans start their day as well. Uh, we get the kids up, we get them breakfast, get them lunch, uh, get them dressed, their shoes on, teeth brushed, pull them away from the toys or whatever they're doing, break up an argument, you know, whatever it is, Mitch, that normal family of four goes through at the beginning of the day. My husband's getting ready for work, I'm getting ready for work while I'm getting the kids ready for school, and we make sure things are in backpacks and lunches are made and water bottles are filled and we get in the car and we go off to school. Controlled chaos. Controlled chaos, exactly, yes. So this is one area where we talk about controlled chaos where I actually had to learn to give myself permission to just let it go. Um, the dishes aren't put away. There's dishes in the sink. Could they go in the dishwasher? Sure, but I would rather leave them there and spend a couple extra minutes with my kids in the morning because the dishes aren't gonna grow up, my kids are gonna grow up. There used to be a time when Braden leaving all of his little knickknacks and pencils and Legos and books on the counter would literally drive me crazy. Or he wouldn't finish his snack and I would put it away or throw it away or get rid of it. But what if he wants to come home from school and finish it? And what if instead of me being so frantic cleaning this up, again, I get to spend an extra minute with him. Or after they go to school, instead of me coming home and tidying up and making all of the toys put back in the, the bins instead of on the table where they left them, what if I get to claim some of those minutes for myself? What if it's the five minutes that I get to be outside reading or sitting or doing nothing because sometimes it's okay to do nothing and it's a choice and I had to give myself permission to make that choice because I understood and I understand now and it's why I'm so passionate about it, why it's so important that everyone has to make that choice of where to find those moments in their day because everyone's busy. I'm just as busy as the rest of them. I work, I work from home, we have the kids, we have soccer, we have dinner, we have bath, bed, story, homework, all of that stuff. I choose to make myself a priority because I know that by giving myself five, 10, 15, two minutes, it makes me a better mom, it makes me a better wife, it makes me a better friend, it, bake, it, it makes me a better mentor for the clients I work with, it, just makes me a better person all around. And who doesn't want that? I don't think that many people would have considered the other side of that impact, not just that it makes you a better mom and a better wife and everything else. But I never even thought about the fact that the kids may have been in the middle of a game and they mm -hmm. left things so that when they came back from school, mm -hmm. they could take off from there. And if it's all put away, that game was just ended and the time was wasted and it impacted them as well. It just fascinates me, the brilliance and the simplicity, but I can imagine this really takes <laughs> a, a concerted effort to actually implement because we all will try to say, I don't I have- I don't have time, right? Exactly. I don't have time. That's the biggest objection to anyone doing something for themselves. And I used to be that way also, but I realized that's why I have a program and that's why I created this program so that people can get the accountability and someone on their side to say, hey, let's really look and see what is a priority in your life right now. Is it really important that you wash those dishes and put them away and fold the laundry? Or is it more important that your kids have time with you? because that's what kids want. They want to be loved. They want you to play on the floor with them and do puzzles and run around in the backyard. And what's really important? The dishes, the laundry, the whatever it is, cleaning up the mess. I mean, cleaning up the mess. I think you're saying also there's balance. I mean, I look around yeah. and this is a well cared for house but it's not to the point of OCD. No. And, and it's just that I'm, I'm feeling that they're not just in the morning in this, you found a few minutes, but throughout everybody's day, everybody's week, everybody's month, everybody's year, 
that there's a lot more time really available mm -hmm. with minor shifts here mm -hmm. and minor shifts there that they think that they have to like necessarily schedule something on their calendar which is also another yes, choice. It is a choice. It's just like you schedule a, a dentist appointment or a doctor's appointment, or you put your child's soccer practice and swim meets on the calendar. You have to make an appointment with yourself too, because self care is one of the most important things that you can do. Like I mentioned earlier, all it takes to start a practice of self care is one moment. Two minutes of deep breathing can do wonders for you. Standing up, when it's your lunch break at work, whether you're working from home like I do or whether you work in a corporate office, don't eat lunch at your desk. That is a form of self-care and it's so simple. Everyone can find those moments, but not everyone knows how to find those moments or how to start implementing them. And that's why having a mentor and someone who has been there and can give them the accountability and the support and the community and the tools and the strategies that's why it's so important that everyone finds someone like that. It sounds also like those moments then free a person up to just have a better experience with their own quality of life. Mm -hmm. And as you said before, that impacts everybody in their yes, world. Yes, everyone. Coworkers, everyone. employers, mm -hmm. spouses, children, mm -hmm. clients. And takes you from a place of anguish to where you are today in inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I know there's people all around the world right now saying, I want to work with you. <laughs> I want to make sure they know how. Yeah. So how, how would they go about working with you in one of these programs? So if someone knows that they're ready to talk to me, they can just go to talkwithpamela.com. It's a website and they can just fill out a little application and I'll be in touch. If someone's still maybe not quite sure and they have questions or they just want to get to know me a little better, they can always email me at info at PamelaZimmer.com. That is so fantastic and I urge everybody to take the time for themselves. And it starts with just a phone call or an email. It Thank does. you so yes. much for being on our show. Thank you, Mitch. It's been a pleasure. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. For information on becoming a guest on our show, contact us at info at nvbusinesschronicles.com. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week at the same time for more from Nevada Business Chronicles.